you guys are there, we'll go ahead and read it. Numbers chapter 23. In verse number 1 it says, And Balaam said unto Balak, Build me here seven altars, and prepare me here seven oxen and seven rams. And Balak did as Balaam had spoken. And Balak and Balaam offered on every altar a bullock and a ram. And Balaam said unto Balak, Stand by thy burnt offerings, and I will go, peradventure the Lord will come to meet me. And whatsoever he showeth me, I will tell thee. And he went to an high place, and God met Balaam. And he said unto him, I have prepared seven altars, and I have offered upon every altar a bullock and a ram. And the Lord put a word in Balaam's mouth, and said, Return unto Balak, and thus thou shalt speak. And he returned unto him, and lo, he stood by his burnt sacrifice, he and all the princes of Moab. And he took up his parable, and said, Balak, the king of Moab hath brought me from Aram out of the mountains of the east, saying, Come curse me, Jacob, and come defy Israel. How shall I curse whom God hath not cursed? Or how shall I defy whom the Lord hath not defied? For from the top of the rocks I see him, and from the hills I beheld him. Lo, the people shall dwell alone, and shall not be reckoned among the nations." Who can count the dust of Jacob and the number of the fourth part of Israel? Let me die the death of the righteous, and let my last end be like his. And Balak said unto Balaam, What hast thou done unto me? I took thee to curse mine enemies, and behold, thou hast blessed them altogether. And he answered and said, Must I not take heed to speak that which the Lord hath put in my mouth? And Balak said unto him, Come, I pray thee with me unto another place, from whence thou mayest see them. For thou, shalt but, for thou shalt see but the uttermost part of them, and shall not see them all. And curse me them from thence. And he brought him into the field of Zophim, to the top of Pigscah, and built seven altars, and offered a bullock and a ram on every altar. And he said unto Balak, Stand here by thy burnt offering, while I meet the Lord yonder. I always wondered where yonder was. There it is. And the Lord met Balaam, and put a word in his mouth, and said, Go again unto Balak, and say thus. And when he came to him, behold, he stood by his burnt offering, and the princes of Moab with him. And Balak said unto him, What hath the Lord spoken? And he took up his parable and said, Rise up, Balak, and hear. Hearken unto me, thou son of Zippor. God is not a man that he should lie, neither the son of man that he should repent. Hath he said, and shall he not do it? Or hath he spoken, and shall he not make it good? Behold, I have received commandment to bless, and he hath blessed, and I cannot reverse it. He hath not beheld iniquity in Jacob. Neither hath seen perverseness in Israel. The Lord his God is with him. And the shout of a king is among them. God brought them out of Egypt. He hath, as it were, the strength of an unicorn. Surely there is no enchantment against Jacob. Neither is there any divination against Israel. According to this time it shall be said of Jacob and of Israel. What God hath wrought. Behold, the people shall rise up as a great lion. And lift up himself as a young lion. He shall not lie down until he eat of the prey and drink the blood of the slain. And Balak said unto Balaam, Neither curse them at all, nor bless them at all. But Balaam answered and said unto Balak, Told not I thee, saying, All that the Lord speaketh, that I must do? And Balak said unto Balaam, Come, I pray thee, I will bring thee unto another place. Peradventure it will please God that thou mayest curse me them from thence. And Balak brought Balaam unto the top of Peor that looketh toward Jeshimon. And Balaam said unto Balak, Build me here seven altars, and prepare me here seven bullocks and seven rams. And Balak did as Balaam said, and offered a bullock and a ram on every altar. Let's have a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord, for bringing us together today into your house to hear your word. I pray that you 
Bless us with your word today and open our hearts, soften our hearts to take in your word, to understand it, to learn from it, to make our lives from your word. I pray that you be with me as I preach it. I pray that you fill me with your spirit to preach your word with truth and boldness the way you would want me to. And it's in Jesus' name that I pray. Amen. The title of my message this morning is I gave you my word. I gave you my word. You're probably not going to hear anything new this morning, but this is what God put on my heart to preach. You know, it used to be back in the day that a man was known by his word. At least that's what we see in all the, you know, cowboy movies and all the old movies that we like. You know, a man was known by his word, and you know, there's a lot of truth to that. If a man kept his word... He was somebody that you could trust, somebody that you could deal with and, you know, have business with. If a man didn't keep his word, you would never trust him again or have any dealings with him. You know the old saying, fool me once, shame on you, but fool me twice, shame on me. You know, that's true. You know, when somebody breaks their word, how can you ever trust them again? You know, I'm a contractor, you know, at my job. I'm a little contractor, but I'm still a contractor. You know, that's what I'm categorized as, you know, by the IRS. You know, I'm just a contractor. But I've never written a single contract. Never once. Isn't that funny? I'm a contractor, but I've never written a contract. Even on my commercial jobs, I don't have to write a contract. You know, people just call me with a job that they need done. I agree to do it, and they agree to pay me. You know, that's our contract. If I don't do the work, they don't ever call me again, and I'll lose a customer, and I'll be out of business really quick because I've never had to advertise. You know, I mean, I've, I've made business cards and, you know, little postcards and things like that, but I've never really had to ad advertise, you know, because it's all basically word of mouth. People know I do a good job and I do what I say and I'm going to do. But, you know, if they don't pay me, then I won't take their calls ever anymore. You know, a lot of people I've put on my do not call list. And it's, it's kind of big, you know, some people that I don't like. You know, when it rings it says do not answer. You know, so I don't answer it. But, uh, you know, God has blessed me a lot. You know, I've been in business for, for quite a long time and I've never really had many problems with people not paying me. I've had a few businesses file bankruptcy and not pay me. You know, Don Pablo's and Ann Taylor, a few, few of those little businesses. You know, some of them are still in business. They just file bankruptcy so they don't have to pay the people that they owe. But, I've, you know, I've never been out much. Not enough to really hurt me. You know, I can just forget about it. Contracts really ain't worth the paper that they're written on anyways. People still figure out how to way, figure out a way to get out of paying, even when they have a contract. You know, when you open up a credit card, you, you basically sign a contract saying that you're going to pay them everything that you borrow. I knew a man that lived down in the hills, you know. You guys know where that's at. He never worked. He lived off of an SSI check, you know, that he claimed that, you know, he couldn't work because he had some kind of mental problem and it was too much stress for him to go to work or whatever, you know, whatever it was. I don't remember exactly, but he never did work. He just lived off an SSI check. And, you know, they, you know how they send you those forms for credit cards in the mail? Well, he just started filling all them out and sending them in. Next thing you know, he had like a whole bunch of credit cards. I forget how many, but it was like eight or ten credit cards, you know, with high limits. So he had this idea, you know, he just went out and maxed out every single credit card that he had. You know, all had a zero balance, but he maxed them all out, except for the last one. The last one he took to a lawyer and used that credit card to pay the lawyer to file bankruptcy. Never paid a nickel. Never paid a nickel. You know, that's just wickedness. You know, people think it's okay to lie 
as long as you can find a loophole. I've known lots of people who have filed bankruptcy and they all thought it was okay. People who file bankruptcy are people who only care about themselves and not others. You know, because when you give your word to somebody that you're going to pay them back, when you borrow, you need to pay it back. But they think it's okay as long as they can find a loophole. You know, I understand things happen, you know, sometimes. But you still need to keep your word. You know, you can always figure out a way to, to work it out and to get it paid off. You know, I mean, unless you're dead, if you're still alive, there's, there's always a way. They may think that it's okay, you know, because some law says so. But it's not okay with God. It's not okay with God because it still makes you a liar. You didn't keep your word. In Psalm 37, verse 21, it says, The wicked borroweth and payeth not again. But the righteous showeth mercy and giveth. You know, the Bible says that you're a wicked person when you borrow and don't pay back. In Revelation chapter 22, verse 14, it says, Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have the right of the tree of life and may enter in through the gates into the city. For without are dogs and sorcerers and whoremongers and murderers and idolaters, and whosoever loveth and maketh a lie. You know, that's an example of that guy who maxed out all them credit cards. You know, he loveth and maketh a lie. You know, that was his plan from the beginning. From the beginning. He knew he couldn't pay those credit cards. He didn't have no income. And that guy I was talking about, you know, before he ended up going crazy. You know, he claimed to have some kind of mental problem to get his free SSI check, which you guys know, down in the hills, that's what everybody does because there's no work down there. But he ended up going crazy, and he died alone and crazy. He died alone and crazy. In Revelation chapter 21, verse 8, it says, But the fearful and the unbelieving and the abominable and murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. You know, I read those two verses because, you know, the one thing that connects those two verses is liars will not be in heaven. You know, it's liars. You know, we all have lied. You know, I've told lots of lies. You know, I am a liar. But Jesus has forgiven me. But if you would, look at verse number 19. In verse number 19, it says, God is not a man that he should lie, neither the son of man that he should repent. Hath he said, and shall he not do it? Or hath he spoken, and shall he not make it good? The Bible says that God cannot lie. In Titus chapter 1, verse 2, it says, In hope of eternal life, which God that cannot lie promised before the world began. Then again, in Hebrews chapter 6, verse 18, it says, That by two immutable things in which it was impossible for God to lie, we might have a strong consolation, who have fled for refuge to lay hold upon the hope that is set before us. <clears throat> Did you know why God can't lie? Because that would make him just like a man. Right there in Numbers chapter 23, verse 19, it says, God is not a man that he should lie. If he was to lie, that would make him just like a man. In Romans chapter 3, verse 4, it says, God forbid, yea, let God be true, but every man a liar, as it is written, that thou mightest be justified in thy sayings, and mightest overcome when thou art judged. Not only would it make him like a man who can lie, but then he would have to throw himself out of heaven and into the lake of fire, as we read in Revelation 21, verse 8, and 22, verse 14. If God would be like a man and told a lie, he'd have to throw himself out of heaven and cast himself into the lake of fire. That's why God is not a man that he should lie. 
It's because his word is a contract. The first ever written words in the Bible were written by the finger of God. The Ten Commandments. I don't know if you guys know that, but the first thing ever written, according to the Bible, was the Ten Commandments written by the finger of God. In Psalm 119, verse 89, it says, Forever, O Lord, thy word is settled in heaven. His word is a contract. And God can't file bankruptcy. Because there's nobody above him to file it. There's nobody above God. His word stands and he cannot lie. If you would look at Numbers chapter 19, um, Numbers chapter 23, verse 19 again. In the second part it says, Neither the Son of Man that he should repent. Hath he said, and shall he not do it? Or hath he spoken, and shall he not make it good? It says, neither the Son of Man, with a little less. You know, he's talking about, you know, being like a regular man that he could lie. Neither the Son of Man that he should repent. If you would go to Luke chapter 4. Luke chapter 4. You know, I don't really know a whole lot. But I do know one thing, that there is a God in heaven, and he has given us his word. And that's God's word. God's word that cannot lie. Now, all other religions on the face of the earth want to offer you the words of some man. Some man that can lie, because God is not a man that he should lie. Buddha, Confucius, Gandhi, Muhammad, Joseph Smith, Ellen White, Charles Taze Russell, the Pope, those are all men. The Catholics believe that the word of the Pope has more authority than the Bible. No, the Pope is just a man who can lie. God cannot lie. You know, all these people that I just mentioned, they're all screaming, Yea, hath God said. Just like the serpent. Back in the Garden of Eden. Yea, hath God said? That's what they're saying. All the new Bible versions that are coming out. They're all screaming, yea, hath God said, because they changed God's word. Well, God said he couldn't lie. And guess what? There's no lies in this book that I'm holding here, the King James Bible. There's no lies in it. Many people claim that there are, but they're not. They're all screaming, yea, hath God said. The word of God is being attacked from every angle on a constant basis. It's constant. In John chapter 10, verse 35, it says, If he called them gods, unto whom the word of God came, and the scripture cannot be broken. That was Jesus talking. He said the scripture cannot be broken. God's word can't be broken. Because God is not a man that he should lie. And John chapter 8, verse 44 says, Ye are of your father the devil, and the lust of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning, and abode not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. The Bible never says that that serpent is the devil. Until we get to John chapter 8, verse 44. Because the first lie ever told was told by the serpent when he said, Ye shall not surely die. That's the first lie ever told. And that's from the father of lies, which is the devil. You know, I got the inspiration for this message from Luke chapter 4. And if you guys are there, let me catch up to you. In Luke chapter 4, verse 1, it says, And Jesus, being full of the Holy Ghost, returned from Jordan, and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness, being forty days tempted of the devil. And in those days he did eat nothing. And when they were ended, he afterward hungered. And the devil said unto him, If thou be the Son of God, command this stone that it be made bread. And Jesus answered him, saying, It is written, that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. And the devil taketh them up into an high mountain, showed unto him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. 
And the devil said unto him, All this power will I give thee, and the glory of them. For that is delivered unto me. And to whomsoever I will, I give it. If thou therefore wilt worship me, and shalt be thine, all shall be thine. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Get thee behind me, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. And he brought him to Jerusalem, and set him on a pinnacle of the temple, and said unto him, If thou be the Son of God, cast thyself down from hence. For it is written, He shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee. And in their hands they shall bear thee up, lest at any time thou dash thy foot against a stone. And Jesus answering said unto him, It is said, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. And when the devil had ended all the temptation, he departed from him for a season. If we go back to Numbers 23. You know, what do we have here? It's a battle between the truth and the devil's lies. A battle between the truth and the devil's lies. Jesus overcame by the truth of God's word. By the truth of God's word. It says, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. Every word of God. There in Numbers chapter 23, verse 21, it says, He hath not beheld iniquity in Jacob, neither hath he seen perverseness in Israel. The Lord his God is with him, and the shout of a king is among them. You know, in Ecclesiastes chapter 8, verse 4, it says, Where the word of a king is, there is power. And who may say unto him, what doest thou? You know, Jesus overcame the temptation, the lies of Satan, by the power of God's word, the power of the truth. If you would go to John chapter 1. You know, the world out there is screaming, Yea, hath God said. You know, but the Bible is screaming from Genesis chapter 1 verse 1 to Revelation chapter 22 verse 21. I gave you my word. That's what God is saying to us here. I gave you my word. Live by it. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. In 2 Timothy chapter 3 verse 16, it says, All scripture is given by inspiration of God. That means it came from God. And is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, truly furnished unto all good works. He said, live by it. You know, my word is what you should live by because it is truth and it's profitable for your lives. In 2 Peter chapter 1 verse 19 it says, We have also a more sure word of prophecy, whereunto ye do well that ye take heed, as unto a light that shineth in a dark place, until the day dawn and the day star arise in your hearts. Knowing this first, that no prophecy of the Scripture is of any private interpretation. If you're there in John chapter 1, in verse number 1 it says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. The same came for a witness to bear witness of the light, that all men through him might believe. He was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of that light. That was the true light, which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name, which were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, 
the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. If you would, flip over to John chapter 3. Just one page over in my Bible. I'm sorry, two pages. John chapter 3, in verse number 16. It says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. You know, what is God telling us there? He says, I gave you my word. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son. He says, I gave you my word. That's what God says. If you would go back to Numbers chapter 23, I know that's a lot of flipping through your Bible, but... You know, Jesus is the Word of God. Everything we believe is based on the Word of God. In Romans chapter 10, verse 17, it says, So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. In Numbers 23, in verse number 5, it says, And the Lord put a word in Balaam's mouth, and said, Return unto Balak, and thus shalt thou speak. And he returned unto him, and lo, he stood by his burnt sacrifice, he and all the princes of Moab. And he took up his parable and said, Balak the king of Moab hath brought me from Aram, out of the mountains of the east, saying, Come curse me, Jacob, and come defy Israel. How shall I curse whom God hath not cursed? Or how shall I defy whom the Lord hath not defied? For from the top of the rocks I see him, and from the hills I beheld him. And lo, the people shall dwell alone, and shall not be reckoned among the nations. Who can count the dust of Jacob, and the number of the fourth part of Israel? Let me die the death of the righteous, and let my last end be like his. And Balak said unto Balaam, What hast thou done unto me? I took thee to curse mine enemies. And behold... Thou hast blessed them altogether. And he answered and said, Must I not take heed to speak that which the Lord hath put in my mouth? You know, the devil and all his demons are constantly trying to curse God's people. But there is no curse for the people who obey and keep and believe God's word, the Bible. There's no curse for us. In 2 Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 7, it says, And to you who are troubled, rest with us when the Lord Jesus shall be revealed from heaven with his mighty angels in flaming fire, taking vengeance on them that know not God, and that obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. You know, that's the Word of God, the Bible. That's God's Word. There is no curse for the people who keep and obey God's Word. We go to one last place, and that's in 1 John chapter 5. 1 John chapter 5. In Romans chapter 8, I'm sorry, I'm going to hold that for a minute. You know, I believe that God wants one thing from us. You know, I've read the Bible many times. I'm sure you guys have too. Uh, read it from cover to cover. And the one thing I get out of the Bible, most of all, is God wants one thing for us, and that's for us to believe His Word. Just to believe His Word. God doesn't need a contract because He sees the heart, whether we believe Him or not. I give you my word. You know, we give our word to God through our heart. You know, does your heart... Give God your word? Or do you say, yea, hath God said? You know, most of the world is saying, yea, hath God said. They, they have doubts and fears of God's word. They don't believe what God has told us in his word. A lot of people accept, you know, those new Bible versions which pervert God's word. Or they believe other men, you know, that's saying, you know, yea, hath God said. The other religions. 
Yea, hath God said. That's all they're saying. They're bringing doubt. People are not obeying the truth of God's word in the Bible. John chapter 11, verse 25, Jesus, it says, Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Believest thou this? You know, it's all about we believing God's word. Nobody can curse you if you keep God's word. In Romans chapter 8, verse 33, it says, Who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? It is God that justifieth. Who is he that condemneth? It is Christ that died, yet rather that is risen again, who is even at the right hand of God, who also maketh intercession for us. You know, the devil and his demons are always trying to curse us, trying to get us to trip, trying to get us to say in our hearts, Yea, hath God said. But nobody can lay unto anything unto our charge. You know, if we keep the word of God and we believe it, because that's what God wants the most. He wants us to believe his word. He says, I gave you my word. In John chapter 14, verse 23, it says, Jesus answered and said unto him, If a man love me, he will keep my words, and my Father will love him. And we will come unto him and make our abode with him. He that loveth me not keepeth not my sayings. And the word which ye hear is not mine, but the Father's which sent me. If you're there in 1 John chapter 5, it says, in verse number 7, For there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, and these three are one. And there are three that bear witness in the earth, the Spirit, and the water, and the blood, and these three agree in one. If we receive the witness of men, the witness of God is greater. For this is the witness of God, which he hath testified of his Son. He that believeth on the Son of God hath the witness in himself. He that believeth not God hath made him a liar, because he believeth not the record that God gave of his Son. And this is the record that God hath given to us eternal life, and this life is in his Son. He that hath the Son hath life. And he that hath not the Son of God hath not life. These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that ye may know that ye have eternal life, and that ye may believe on the name of the Son of God. You know, what is God saying there? That he gave us his word. He says, I gave you my word, and if you don't believe me, you're calling me a liar. That's what he's saying. I'd hate to be the one who has to stand before God, and that's to explain why they called God a liar. Because that's what, that's what you're doing when you say you don't believe the word of God or you, you believe all the nonsense of these other religions or you believe the word of God is, you know, come from man and not God. You're calling God a liar. What they're really doing is calling God the devil. You remember back when Jesus said, you are of your father the devil? And he's a father of lies. The devil is the father of lies. But God is the father of the truth. What is the unforgivable sin? It's calling good evil and evil good. And that's what you're doing when you're calling God a liar when you don't believe his word. That's the unforgivable sin, calling good evil and evil good. There's only one good, and that's God. That's what Jesus said. There's only one good, and that's God. I'd hate to be the one that has to stand in front of him and say, you know, you was evil, or you're a liar. I didn't believe anything you said. God has given us his word. God says, I gave you my word. And his name is Jesus.